case yeah. if you have any questions, you can always drop in and then we'll pick it up right from there. Yeah. So screen share. And I believe that you're able to see my slide already. OK, so welcome on board. Let's get started. So why do hackers steal? Well, they want to make money. Money out of what? Our data or our company's data. But how do they get our information? There's only two options. We gave it to them or someone or something that we trust gave it to them. So for this session, let's look at how are we giving away our data? Obviously, unknowingly, uh, none of us would be would be giving our data to everyone out there and say, hack me. No, right? We would not do that. So unknowingly, how are we giving away our data and how hackers are taking control of our day to day life and our identity? Let's go one by one. Yeah. So. About the corporates, about the companies, all of them are getting hacked as these companies are trying to put defenses in place. The hackers are trying to find cracks, so there is nothing called as 100 percent security like in, in our house, right? We have our gates, we have our doors, we have CCTV, we have alarm system, but still. A robber can enter into our house if he's persistent and if he actually uses his brain a little bit, trying to come from from different like angles. So the companies are putting in multi layered defenses to make it difficult as they are doing their part as individuals. Let's see what we need to do. So before getting to know what we need to do, let's understand what's happening to us, right? Here we go. The first thing we all are using Internet today. From the normal browsing to the chat GPT. We ask a lot of questions. We give away a lot of like details. On Internet, we call something called as Internet footprint. Every website that you visit. Okay, this is your. Um, your tip number one of the day. Every website that you visit is capturing information about you and what you are looking for which is in the form of a cookies or collecting information from the forms that you fill up. For example, you wanted to download a report for your work. You're looking for some data. OK, so you're going to browser. Ask Uncle Google, you'll get the whole world coming to you, right? So you went in and you typed something to search for and you found the report or the data that you were looking for. But to download, they are asking you to register. They're asking your first name, the last name, your email address, your company name, your phone number sometimes to send you OTPs. So they are like collecting your data to give a report that you wanted to download freely. So what's happening? We are giving our data. Now you can ask me, Clement, if I don't give my, my name or my email address, I'll not be able to get the download link because these guys are smart, right? They're going to say you have to give me your your valid email without which you will not be able to download. Because they're going to send that PDF document, for example, to your email address. Okay, like makes sense. So you are forced in a way to give away your data. Now here is where the defense. Okay, so this is your problem. Yeah, the challenge that you you encounter day in and day out. Not every like website you visit daily, isn't it? Right? A research like shows more than like 60 to 65 percent of the time we do not visit the same website again in our lifetime. Not today, tomorrow, in our entire lifetime. These websites are called as single touch point websites. And this website owners know about it. That is why they are trying to collect your information so that they can send in a lot of emails with advertisements and so on and so forth. So the moment you reach out to a website, the website will be trying to collect information about you by asking you directly or by reading it from your browser. So now. From the example that I was like sharing with you, you want to download something and you went to a website and that website is asking you to fill up a form with your email address. 
Now you are cornered without you putting the email address. You will not get the data that you want. So what should you do now? If you give away your email address, you're going to get a lot of spams and you might have a lot of scams coming towards you. So in this case, here is my defense, my tips for you. If you go to Uncle Google, okay, I've actually opened up everything and, and kept so that we can like finish this session in, in 45 minutes. If you go to Google and type disposable emails, you will find a lot of temporary emails. Now, use this only on websites that you're going to visit only once year. Don't use this technique on your banking sites or your healthcare insurance and all the others. OK, so if you want to go and download something urgently and they're asking your personal details and we don't have to give it to them. Yeah, so you can use temporary emails. Click on disposable emails and you will get a lot of these. Now I have actually opened one of them called as email on deck.com and it created me a private email. You see that? Lucille at we stop sb.com. So an email got created for me. It's a temporary email which I can use it and throw it away. It will automatically die or I can delete it right over here. So what I have done over here is I have used this email to register myself an account in a website. For example, in this website called as Multigo, there is a registration form for me to download something for free. But they're asking me to put my email address so that I can send an activation link to my inbox before they allow me to download and use this particular software. Correct? So now I gave this email in the form. Hence, the activation link has come here. You see that? I can click here. And I got the link. I click on that link and I got the account activated and I got my download enabled without giving my information, my name, nor my email address. Now you can come back and say, Clement, there are sites that ask us our phone number. Why? Because they're going to send an OTP to this phone number before they allow me to download a file. If that's what they are forcing you, I'll give you a solution for that too. Let's go back to Uncle Google and ask, hey, receive free SMSs. Not only you have temporary email addresses, you also have temporary phone numbers and you can select which country phone number you want. Yeah, so just can say receive free SMS and I've just opened up all of this right over here. See that you can get a phone number from US, Canada, Philippines, Netherlands, Spain, Hong Kong, and you can go on, on. whichever country you want, pick up and you can use that number right you look at this one is more numbers this is the malaysian phone numbers so you can give these numbers to receive your otp now your next question you might have is okay i've given this number how do i check the otp now so for example if i've given this united states number i can click on open here it will show me the messages as it comes you see the whole world is using it one minute ago two minutes ago the reason why I told you not to use these temporary stuff for your banking or your any corporate website is because the whole world is going to see it. Okay, so only use these temporary emails, temporary phone numbers for those sites that you want to have a temporary access to get things done. Okay, so this is a simple stuff to reduce your footprint. Clear guys, disposable emails, disposable phone numbers. Don't be naive. Yeah, because the more you share, the more attack is going to come towards you. Yes, we all have been told in our kindergarten sharing is. What sharing is caring, correct? But the sharing is caring stops in kindergarten. If you bring that on to internet, you're going to get a lot of attacks your way. You may not be able to differentiate what is a genuine traffic and what is an attack, and you might be compromised. Clear with this? Okay, let's move on to the slide. I have some interesting stuff for you. Now, 
what you see is three QR codes. Now, let me tell you a story about this. Today, and particularly during COVID and after COVID, any restaurant we go, we get a QR code to scan. In some restaurants, they have actually put a plaster and they have actually stuck the QR code on the table. You go there, you scan, and you know exactly what to do. The moment you go into the restaurant, sit on the table, you know you have to scan the QR code. No one have to come and tell you that, isn't it? So QR code is there everywhere. And we are also paying using QR codes. So QR code has become part of our life. But the only problem is we don't know what the hell is inside the QR code because this black and white dot, dot, dot. Is that right? Can you can anyone of you tell me what is behind that QR code that is over here? You would not know. All we do is scan the QR code. It opens up a page and we get things done. So now I have given you three little QR codes on your screen and I ask you to do this. Yeah, so first QR code. When you scan this QR code, it's going to open up a website. OK, listen to me first before you do anything. OK, listen to me first. The first QR code, when you scan it, it's it's going to take you to a website where you're going to see a button called this visit site. Click on it. It'll open up and show you. And it'll start to scan whatever cafe that is near you. While it is doing that to you, it is going to send me live wherever you are. Yeah? It is going to send me live your location. Exact location where you are. Now the second QR code. Is a little bit advanced. You scan the second QR code where I've given the label as scan and receive free gift. If you scan that particular QR code, it is going to take access of your camera off of your mobile device and is going to send me pictures of your front camera without you doing anything. The third QR code that you're seeing on the screen, if you scan that QR code on your mobile phone, it's going to actually activate your microphone and whatever you're going to talk, it's going to like capture every five seconds. It's going to send it to me over here. Now, the moral of the story is this. When we scan the QR code, the QR code can execute a lot of things on our mobile device. Irrespective of whether we are having an Android phone or an iPhone. A lot of friends who are using iPhone, uh, I used to call them that they are those who are living in Apple and Wonderland because they believe in the Apple's Wonderland. They all are very secure and they will never get hacked. If you believe that, take your iPhone, scan this QR code. OK, now these three QR codes are not installing any malware in your mobile phone. It can deliver malware. The real hackers are sticking QR codes all over the place, which can deliver a malware right into your mobile phone. That is why a lot of people say, I just scanned the QR code. I don't know what happened and my money is gone from my bank account. Because it is dropping a malware into your mobile phone. But these three QR codes for demo purposes, we have not put any malware. The moment you close the browser that it is going to open, it will stop sending us the data. If you want, you can try it out. Right, so whoever go ahead, I'll give you one, two minutes. Let's see what kind of information I am getting out of this QR code. Uh, I'll put this up for another 30 seconds. Whoever wants to scan, you can scan. OK, you can first scan the free cafe near you. Then you can scan. To receive free gift. Which is which will take away your camera feed. And the last one is your microphone. Yeah, don't. When you scan the third one, don't keep quiet, all right? Don't ask me. Figure it out who is behind the mobile phone. I'm not going to talk to you. Don't do that, okay? Right? Talk so that I, when I play back, you'll know, hey, hey, that's my voice, man. Okay? So the QR code, I'm going to take it off, right? So let's see, will anyone have actually scanned things across? See that? 
you see a lot of people have actually given their uh, locations of there are scans happening across there are a couple of this has happened from Hambank. All right. You see that? Okay. It actually gives away your exact location from where you are scanning that. Okay. And as you are doing, you can see that there is iOS phone that is connected. There's an Android phone that is connected. Yeah. And there are people who have actually opened up the second one and there's an image that has actually come in from that camera anyone else okay someone opened and closed it so it says user denied the request for geolocation that's fine anyone wants to scan okay let me put the qr code again for you just in case if you have actually missed it so just the qr code what can go wrong with the qr code but that's the kind of understanding that we have, guys. Every technology that we use today, it can be used for positive and for negative. So we need to be aware of these. So don't simply scan QR codes that is in public places. Don't scan QR codes that are all over the place. See, now COVID is under control. You can still ask for menu. If you are scanning QR code for payment, make sure it's the QR code that the merchant is giving you, not lying on the table. Okay, right. So with that, let's move on. Uh, if there's anything that is coming, yeah, there is more Google Map stuff that's coming up. Ha! Huh. Someone from Kwantan, Paha. Is that how? Is how your house looks like, buddy? Okay, right. Uh, that's another one, or nearby. Okay, it, it got few location shots coming in from wherever you are. You see that, yeah? So pretty much stuff, okay? Don't worry, there is no malware coming on your stuff. There's an audio file saved by someone who actually opened up the microphone QR code, yeah? So with this three QR codes that you have scanned, if at all you have scanned, be assured that there is no malware has come up, but after you have experienced it, Close that browser window. Otherwise, it'll keep on sending the images to us over here. Okay, so I don't have to see what you are doing inside your house. Okay, wonderful. So let's pick up something. Okay, the images that has come up, it's running in my hacker machine in the back. You see that there's a lot of this that's actually picking up from people who's doing it. Let me quickly show you the images. And images that is that has come up. Okay, so you can see that all of that that has actually come up over here, all right? What was that? Okay, <laughs> right. Okay, I know her. I know her. You may not. I know her. Okay, right. Okay, great. Uh, so we have more friends coming up. You see that? Hi. Yeah, great. So. So wonderful. So this is images. Let's go on to sounds. These are some sounds that actually came from people who have opened up their QR code. So let me copy it onto my desktop. Okay. And then I'll open them up for you. Paste. Okay, someone is very quiet trying to ask me to figure it out. Come on, guys, talk something. Actually, working only the camera seems to be. Oh, is it because my speakers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. People are speaking. Ah, okay. Someone. Yeah. Right. So there are sounds that has actually come through. So you got the point, right? So it's it's pretty much. Let's go back. So. Careful with the QR code. The learning, the takeaway is careful with the QR codes. QR codes, wrong QR codes can get us into trouble. You might lose your data and you might lose a complete access of your mobile device. 
if anyone drops a malware onto your mobile phone, they can totally control your life. You know why? Our mobile phone sleeps with us in our bedroom. We take our mobile phones into toilets, restrooms, bathrooms, everywhere. We have a lot of personal pictures in our mobile phones. Careful, QR code is an easy way to get into your life. OK, let's move on. The other common thing that we hear is phishing. Where people send you an email as if it is coming from bank. Or from other corporate entities like Facebook and other social medias. You believe that it did come from there. Why? Because you see the from address. The from address seems to be coming from Facebook. And then you open up the email. It looks like a Facebook email. It looks like a banking email. As if it is been sent from Ambank or any other banks, for example. Or it can be from LinkedIn or the others. Guys, let's take a very simple stuff. But before that, let me show you some, some samples. You look at this. These are some giveaways, whether it is a phishing email or not. The dear might be a very general, impersonalized greetings. Then definitely the email is going to tell you, act now, do it now. If you don't do it now, you're going to lose money. If you don't click now, you're going to lose your access to your account. So there must be something that says do now urgency because they want you to click. Because once you have opened that email, next time you may not come and reopen it because you might you might forget it. So they want you to do something, call to action when you open that email. Yeah, so careful whenever you see an email that says as do it now, click it now. If not, you're going to suffer or or whatever. Yeah, so careful with those messages and then they have a link. Whatever the link shows, not necessarily the truth. Move your mouse on top of that link and see where it is actually taking you. In this example, it says paypal.com and the bottom you see it's going somewhere else. Yeah, so always validate and verify. Now look at this sample. Genuine, as if it's coming from LinkedIn, it didn't. We created it. Office 365, a lot of Office 365 people get emails as if it's coming from Office 365. I security alert. Oh, we actually found someone trying to break into your account. Click here to go and change your password. Now you feel happy. Oh, Microsoft is trying to protect us. Now how do you know it is actually coming from Microsoft or not? Yeah, so Netflix iCloud from Apple. So these are all are common entry points that they send email to you and you click on it and it opens up a page that looks exactly the same. You put your username and password, boop, your credentials are lost. Okay, now how do I defend? Very simple. For most of or, or for all social media, for all social media websites or accounts, you definitely have a mobile app running on your mobile phone. And if there is a notification that they need to tell you something, you would have come in your notification of your mobile app, correct? Then why do you have to open up the email? So point number one, do not open any email that originates from your social media websites. After problem solved. Second, do not open any emails if it originates from unknown websites or any news channels and news websites. If you want, go and check out there on the news channels, not through your email. The third, generally banks don't send you an email. They don't, until unless you have signed up for e-statement. Only then you open, otherwise don't open. The same applies to your insurance and all the others. So only known emails you open, unknowns you don't, even if it is known, coming from social media, bank, or any other uh, news channels, don't open. Don't click on the links. If at all you have to click on the link, check and confirm where the link is actually taking you. Now, let me take you to the next topic. In this era of artificial intelligence, Chat GPT can do a whole lot of stuff. A lot of people are talking about Chat GPT. Chat GPT is going to change the way the 
the world is moving man ai is going to take over our, our jobs everything is going to change around us well before it all happens it's not going to happen overnight isn't it so as i told you every every technology comes with its plus and minus so why am i talking about all of this this is called as voice phishing now let's take a scenario you are in your office and you're working or you are outside your office and you're traveling. Now you receive a call. You look at your mobile phone. The caller ID is your boss, your manager or your C-level, your boss's phone number reflecting on your caller ID. What would you do? If you are in the holiday, you may not pick up. Huh? <laughs> but otherwise, you might just say, pick up. When you pick up, you are hearing your boss talking to you and he's asking you to do something urgently. Will you or will you not do it? If it is your boss, you will do it. Gone are the days where someone calls you and tells you I'm calling from the bank. You give me your credit card details. OK, nowadays we we wouldn't do that, right? But now we are getting calls as if it is coming from the bank with the bank phone number on our caller ID. With our office phone number in the caller ID, our manager's phone number in the caller ID. Now take it to the next level. They are creating deep fake audio calls where the call that came with your manager's phone number you are hearing your manager's voice, but it is not your manager who's talking to you. Are you understanding? Your boss number on your caller ID, you picked up thinking it's your boss and you're talking and it's a boss's voice. Now you will respond. You will give away whatever information has been asked by your boss and you might take actions to your boss that has been instructed by your boss. but. It is not your boss who's talking. I mean, how is that possible? That's where technology comes in, guys. See, this one is called a spoof card. This is an app anyone can download, and you can make a phone call as if it is coming from anyone's phone number. And you can even send an SMS from anyone's number. So you get a phone number, uh, a call, and the phone number that is coming up in the caller ID, not necessarily the actual person who is calling you. OK, so everything have to be double confirmed. And here is this ultra realistic voice cloning. I'm giving you the site okay? because it's a descript slash over dub. You can pretty much go to this website over the weekend. You can create a free account and you can talk and you can record your voice for two to three minutes. It will generate an AI synthesis cloned voice model of yours, 95% accurate. Then you type whatever you want. It will read it in your voice. Now, if I club these two technologies together, spoof card and overdub, I can now make automated phone calls with someone else's cloned voice. And this is what is happening already. Here are some news for you. Fraudsters cloned company director's voice in 35 million US dollar heist. A fraudster used artificial intelligence to mimic CEO's voice in unusual cybercrime case that lost around 220,000 euros. So these kind of attacks is already happening in UK and US, my dear friends. Attacks generally move the demographics. So it's coming towards us. It may already be here, a little bit here and there, by you receiving a call as if they are calling from the bank. But if this is going to get worsened with AI. So we have, if you are an employee working for someone, even if it's your your boss's voice telling you to do something that is against your SOP and your responsibility, don't do it. If your family member is the one who's calling you and asking you for an instant money, double confirm. 
Never redial the number back. Go to your contacts, take that number and then dial out or open the keypad and type the number. Never redial. Because when you redial, you are calling the same caller, the fraudster, back. And he will be telling, I just told you, right? Get it done. And you will be like, yeah, yeah, my boss wants it to be done. Yeah, so be careful with all of these stuff. Now, SMSs. Now, well, MDEC and MCMC and the others are actually have come to a, a conclusion that they are actually telling all the banks that, hey, no URLs in the SMSs. Yeah, many countries have done it before. No URLs in the SMS. So any SMS that you receive with the URL to click, don't click. If I click, what happens, Clement? Let's take an example. This is what happened in Singapore. OCBC bank customers lost like more than 10 like million Singapore dollars from their accounts. DBS bank customers lost money too. Similar stuff has happened in Malaysia too. So whenever you receive an SMS, again, with the urgency, click it now, otherwise you're going to lose money from your account. Do it now, otherwise your account is going to be locked out. Right? Take your card, take the number from it, make a phone call to confirm. Don't get panic. Don't click, don't click on that link. Okay? And do not call the phone number that is mentioned in the SMS. Always go by the phone number that's behind your car. See, yeah, guys, this is smishing. And another common thing that happens with people is they're using the computer as normal. All of a sudden, from the right bottom corner of your laptop, there comes a pop up to say that you have been infected with the virus. Click here to download an antivirus. And you know that I already have an antivirus. What? And if you know that you are you have an antivirus A and the pop-up now says antivirus B, there itself is something wrong. If you have not allowed something to scan your device, and if that something is coming and telling you, hey, some bad stuff is out there, then that thing that is telling you is the bad stuff. So don't fall for all this care way. If possible, and it is good and it is mandatory that every one of us must have a proper antivirus in our computers. If you can spend an additional $20, $30 more, buy an antivirus that has a component called as Endpoint Detection and Response, EDR. Antivirus with the EDR component, Endpoint detection and response component will protect you from from malwares and new types of attacks up to around 80 to 90 percent okay so don't fall for scarewares see there is malware yeah there is scarewares there is firmwares there's a lot of wares yeah so we have to be a little bit careful if we do not then they'll pull our underwear and they'll go off so we have to be more careful down here, yeah? So don't fall for all these scarewares that come, the notification say that, click here to go and install something. No antivirus will ask you to go and download something because that's the job of the antivirus itself. Okay, so clear on this one. Now, before I actually come to the Q&A of it, let's quickly run through this. This is again, a common attack that is happening in this part of the world. See, we Asians, we respect our bosses a lot. When we have been given an instruction, we will get it done. And I told you about the phones, right? Now, this is about emails. People getting instructions via emails. And according to 10 Micro's numbers, the statistics not only from 10 Micro, all across other, other companies, in the Asia Asia Pacific region, Malaysia is one of the top three in what? We are been losing money by following instructions given via emails. 
all this while, what I've been telling to everyone is whenever you receive an email, check the from address. Whenever you receive an email, check the from address. The from address have to be correct, which is good. The hackers are also aware of this. You know what they did? They started manipulating the from address to the exact from address that you're asking for. So if you check the email, it will show that it is coming from your manager. Let me give you a, a case study that happened here. Yeah? In Malaysia, a CEO of a law firm goes for a vacation with his family to Thailand. One day into the travel, the finance manager in the office receives an email as if it is coming from the CEO who's traveling in Thailand. Hi, so-and-so. We have lost all our baggages, our passports, and our mobile phones. We are working with the Malaysian embassy in Thailand to get temporary papers to come back to Malaysia. It might take around four or five days to sort out all of this. Immediately transfer 50,000 ringgit to this Thailand bank account, which uh, belongs to my service agent who is helping us here. Do it now because the kids don't have food to eat or dress to change. Now, the finance manager's heart melts. She's very, very concerned and she's very worried about the boss. But she again checks the from address. It is boss's from address. She went and transfers the money out. After a week, the boss comes back to the office and she goes back, boss, um, I'm sorry that you have lost so much money. Uh, here is the, the approval form for that $50,000 that I sent to you. I said, what $50,000? I never asked you to send any money. That's when they got to know that they had been scammed. Now, this is one example, guys. Many orga big organizations, public listed firms in Malaysia have lost money. How do they do that? How can someone send an email as if it is coming from someone else? Is that means their email is being like compromised? Not necessarily, my dear friends. Anyone can send an email to anyone if they know the email address. Now, I'm going to quickly show you something before we go on for Q&A. I opened up things for you, yeah? Look at this. I've actually created an account called as Abdul Faisal. Now, I go to Google and type anonymous mailer, means anonymous emailer. Again, these are all of free services. Anyone can do this. See, gone are the days where we, we used to actually watch an English movies, right? Hackers are those that actually sit in the dark dungeon underground with a hoodie on their head with a dim light right and typing a lot of zeros and ones with a pepsi and a coke on the table with a pizza in a corner with a rat running in another corner and importantly two pretty girls with long heels and tight jeans walking up and down now all of that happens only in english movies in reality anyone can be a hacker all of those demos that i showed you it only takes two minutes each to set it up Okay, not more than that, and you do not need any technical expertise. So don't think that hackers have to, are the smart guys. Anyone sitting next to you can be one. Yeah, so an mailer. So I actually opened it up. It'll say send prank emails, fake anonymous emails. You can put any person's from name, from email address to a person's email address over here. I'll just put at company.com. It can be any company name here. Okay, for this demo, I can put gmail.com. Okay, I can, oops. Faisal Abdul327 at gmail.com. So what's happening over here? James John is sending an email to Faisal Abdul. Is James John sending this email? No, someone else. I am sending it out. And I can write whatever I want over here. And... Faisal Abdul 307 at gmail.com is correct, right? So I can say I am not a robot and I can submit it across over here. So it can send out an email as if John has sent that email out. Do you look at that? Thank you. Faisal Abdul 327 at gmail.com has received an email. You see that? Who sent it? James John with his profile picture. He didn't send it. So if you're only looking at the from address, you're going to fall for it. So if I go over here, since I did not pay the money, and since I used the free service from them, 
And since they, they want me to pay $97 to use their service, they put a lot of advertisements inside, which gets flagged by Gmail. If I have a paid account over here, which you can, and there are a lot of such accounts out there, you will never get any of this. You will only see this. So if I only look at the from address, everything seems to be perfectly all right. You see that? James.john at gmail.com. So careful, my dear friends. Okay. Anything suspicious, any instruction that's not normal, not part of your SOP, not part of your responsibilities, validate and verify. Okay. Now, the last part of my slide deck is about password. Well, you would have heard a lot about passwords. Passwords are those that actually use as username, passwords are the credentials to authenticate whether are you the right person to access your data. And we always have this problem. I can't remember password, Clement. This is something that I hear most of the time out there. People say, I can't remember password. But if you go and ask them, hey, which school did you go? They'll be able to tell. Who was your, your first crush in your school? They'll be able to tell. Where did you go for your first date in your life? They'll go. They'll know. All right? The college friends, everything we under we are able to remember. The only thing that we can't remember is the password. That's a problem. It's not that we can't remember password. We don't want to remember password. So here's my tip to you guys. Select passwords that you don't have to remember. Select passwords that you don't have to remember. Your problem is solved. You don't have to remember it. You're not understanding, right? So take a very simple example. Let's take a notepad on over here, yeah? And do you love your family? Uh, I believe all of us love our family. I love my family. Do you need to remember this? No, you know that. Yeah, so change this. Exclamation, L capital, O zero, V E, just change one or two. You don't have to change everything. F, M, I, L, Y. You have a strong password. Minimum eight characters, uppercase, lowercase, number, symbol. You have them all. Well, you believe in God? God bless me. Convert this. Inshallah. Praise the Lord. Go ahead. Whatever that is you, and you don't have to remember that, convert them into your password. A lot of people tell you use password managers. Now, if you ask me, I'll tell don't use password managers. You know why? Password managers are magnets that attract hackers. Okay, let me make it more simpler for you to understand. Yeah, if I am a robber, if I am a robber and I want to go and steal from 10 houses today. Okay, what will I do? I will send my, my people to go and scout out who's having a lot of money. They come back and tell me, there's a lot of money in one house. The other nine is nearly empty. Will I waste my time and money and effort to go and break into all the other nine houses? Or will I go straight to that one house where all the money is? Correct? Logic? So if I am a bad guy, rather than me hacking one by one and stealing your username and password, if I break into the password manager that contains hundreds of thousands of people's username and password. It's a jackpot that I'm looking for. Is that right? Now put back the statement that I told you. Password managers are magnets that attract hackers. Keep your password simple. Convert them into numbers and symbols. The best password managers up here called as brain, and you have a lot of space and memory bank in it. Use them. Just stay on for another couple of years maximum because all technologies are moving away into password less authentication. You will never need to remember any passwords there afterwards. All right. So, with all of that, okay, so you have this slide. So, let me actually summarize a few things. And there's one more thing that my friends here in uh, um, Ambank told me to tell you is whenever you're doing online shopping, Whenever you're doing online shopping, when you are putting up your credit card details, check the address bar on the top. Never give your credit card details on a merchant website. 
make sure that the credit card that you're keying in, the information that you're keying in is on the bank website or your payment gateways, like your EGHL or IP88 or the others or PayPal. Yeah, so only give your credit card details to the proper payment gateways and banks. Never give your credit card details to the merchants because they may not have proper security in place to protect your credit card details and they might give away your credit card details out there and hence you will start losing money and you may not be able to pick it up in your day-to-day -day transaction lines, but in the end of the day, you might have lost a major chunk. Okay, so whenever using your browser, please make sure you have set your browser to wipe off everything when you close it. See, for example, every browser has this setting called as privacy and security. If you go down there, you will find this. Please make sure you do not store anything and you clean up everything. See, always use private browsing mode is very good. Whenever you close your browser, clear off everything. See this delete cookies and site data when Firefox is closed. The same thing is available in your internet or your Microsoft Edge. You can go in over here and you can go to your settings and you will be able to find it right over here. Not now, go right over here, clear browsing data. Choose what to clear every time you close the browser. Enable everything off. Google Chrome has the similar settings under privacy. Do not store anything on your browser. Keep it clean. Every time you close the browser, wipe off everything. Okay? So that will be the best in uh, providing your internet security. Check the URLs, okay? Use your own dedicated email address. If you are only visiting a website once, use disposable emails or phone numbers, right? Careful with your online passwords. Don't store it anywhere else. And do not connect to public Wi-Fi's. So wherever, uh, for example, your uh, hotel Wi-Fi or your copy PM, yeah. McDonald's, uh, Starbucks, do not connect to any free Wi-Fi's. Always use your hotspots, okay? If, if you have to use your free Wi-Fi, then you use VPNs, okay? Always check whether you have HTTPS. Don't share your personal information to people out there on internet. Do not take pictures in your house and put that picture on your Instagram, Facebook, and all of it. Then don't complain that, how come these people know my house address here? Because the images gives away locations. And mobile is very important. Make sure you keep your mobile phone clean and safe. And there are technologies called as mobile threat defense to protect your mobile phone. If you want to more details, you can always reach us and we can help you out with that. Okay. so. With that, uh, any questions, guys? Any questions before we say I have spoken a lot? Okay, so there is a question. How can we know if the QR code that is shared is legit? Unfortunately, when we create technologies, we don't think about the security problems. So I'm sorry. By just looking at that ugly little black and white dots, we will never know whether it is a good one or a bad one until you scan it. Yeah, so you have to be careful when you scan it, check where it is going, unintended website being opened, close it immediately. More than one website that is getting opened, close it, close it immediately because genuine QR codes, one website at a time, Yeah, not multiple websites. So be careful when it is opening. The moment it looks different, close it off. Okay, if the location is off on the phone, does the QR code still shell location depending upon the QR code. The one that I shared to you, it needs you to enable it because it's a demo, right? If I'm a real hacker, I can actually enable it. The moment I can put a malware, which now runs as a software in your mobile device, it can start manipulating your permissions. OK, so yes, depending upon what the QR code is serving your mobile device, 
it can alter your permissions, including your locations. Okay, does Apple phone less prone by phishing compared to? Hey, where does it go? Okay, compared to Android. Okay, I'm I'm actually seeing the screen up here. Compared to Android. Okay, now it doesn't matter, guys. A uh, a phishing attack or a malware attack, or a, or even a QR code attack. You, you you would have actually seen earlier. There were a lot of iOS phones that actually came up. So it doesn't matter whether it is an iPhone or an Android phone. They are equally open for attacks. They are equally open for attacks and they are getting compromised. So my dear iPhone users, please wake up from your Apple in Wonderland. You are having a lot of zero days and the most attacked and most compromised mobile phone to date is iPhone, not Android phone. Yeah, so whether you're using any device in general, you need to protect it. iPhone, please, one step further, you need to make sure that you patch it as the patches are available, and please stop clicking all over the place. Okay. Okay, what about school or college Wi-Fi? What if the hacker is a student? Can we actually send the student out of the of the campus? Well, uh, we have to live with it, right? So we need to put, so you, for, for example, if this question is gonna be asked by a professor, lecturer, or someone who works in a university, now you need to put in defenses. As I told you earlier, guys, nothing is 100% secure. No one is 100% secure. Yeah, so all we need to do is we need to put multi-layered security approach. The common okay mistake that people do is they speak about multi-layered, but it is a unidirectional multi-layer. So if their house is here, if I keep on putting the defenses in a single direction, then there is a lot of other area that is open. So whenever we talk about security, we need to have a ringed approach, right? So there's gonna be multiple rings of defenses. Okay, what's the recommended apps or software to prevent scam or malware? Now, uh, if I start mentioning name of the software, it becomes free advertisement. <laughs> and that becomes a problem for the other. So I'm going to give you a technology, which was on my slide earlier, mobile threat defense. In short, MTD, mobile Threat defense. Go to Google and type mobile threat defense. If you want, I can actually share my screen back again. And if you go to Uncle Google now and um, look for mobile threat defense, that you will get the answers over here. All right? You can look and you can open up and you can actually select which product that you want to buy. So have a mobile threat defense that will protect your mobile phone from any attack that is coming from Wi-Fi, any attack that is coming from SMSs, any attack that might be coming from charger cables or any kind of malware. It can automatically pick up, block it, at least tell you. Okay. So once we open a web page by scanning a QR code, like for example, to order food at a restaurant, once we close it, will it end all information that it sends out? Uh, again, uh, good question. Uh, it depends upon the QR code. For our example, I'd given the QR code that is on the browser because I don't want to put a malware in your mobile phone. Yeah, because we are here as uh, together, with AmBank to give you the awareness. Hence, we did not put anything on your mobile phone. But a real hacker will always try to drop something on your mobile phone. The moment he does that, even if you have closed your browser, it will still run on the mobile device. So that's why the MTD becomes very important to defend your mobile phone. Uh, right, good. So will you be sharing the slides? I, I I actually leave it to our AmBank friends to make that decision. 
my son's phone has licensed antivirus software installed and yet his phone still got hacked. Is there any way to prevent this? Good question. You're not alone uh, there. Uh, OK, now the antivirus companies are not going to be happy with me for the answer that I'm going to give. But let me tell you the truth. An antivirus on a mobile phone is nearly. Useless. I would say nearly it's not going to help. OK, let, let me not use the word useless. It is not going to help. And that's why your son got hacked. OK, now let me explain why. Yeah. See whether it, it makes sense. How does an antivirus generally work? Antivirus scans the hard disk of your device to see if there is any malware that has come on the device. This is how an antivirus works even on your laptop. So far so good. Now on a mobile device, things are different. Your mobile device is designed with security in it. That means the operating system of your mobile device is locked. That is why people say jailbreak, routing, that you have to do to install additional softwares because it is protected by default. If you are using an iPhone, your hard disk is already encrypted. No one can read it. Yeah, so since the mobile phone has already locked out the hard disk and the operating system, antiviruses really struggle to run on the mobile phone to provide its its services. So rather than buying the antivirus, you go and invest your money in actually buying a mobile threat defense, MTD. OK, yeah. Uh, what is protector for mobiles, especially for iPhone is yes, same MTD mobile threat defense. I have now become the marketing guy for a mobile threat defense. <laughs> uh, well, I think I've, I've, I've also have answered this question. Why Android phones are more prone to malware? Uh, the recent past, both Android and iPhones are getting prone to malware. Particularly, Androids are more prone for a few reasons. See, iOS is a closed OS. Only Apple as a company maintains the operating system codes and everything. Whereas Android has a lot of flavors. Google do not control the flavors there afterwards. For example, Samsung might have its own flavor of Android. Vivo might have another flavor. Oppo might have another flavor. So all these are different, different flavors with their own features, functionalities of the phone inside it. So managing Android is always a challenge compared to an iPhone because there are multiple versions of the operating system. Each one might have its own set of vulnerabilities that needs to be protected from. OK. Anyone else? Your questions are getting filtered. Waiting, there's a screen right in front of me. As if you are, you were thinking, why is Lemon keep on lo looking up here? There's a huge screen where the questions are coming in. It's actually flowing in, so the team is trying to filter it out to remove all those already asked questions. Yeah, so bear with me a little bit over there. OK, so let me unshare my screen here. Uh, so rather than you seeing the same screen again. Uh, OK. Uh, is there a way to know if there's any malware dropped on your phone? Hmm. Depends, but let me give you some basic trips. Uh, your data consumption goes up. If you are looking at your data consumption generally, if you know that how much of data that you are actually using up for a month or for a week or for a day, if you are actually seeing it, you will definitely see that there is an increase in your data consumption because it is actually sending out a lot of data. Yeah, for example, if there is a camera feed that is keep on going out, then the data usage goes up. The battery comes down. Yeah. Uh, the battery gets depleted very fast 
your phone gets heated up very fast. Okay, and there might be multiple pop-ups that can appear on your phone as you're as you're using it. So these are all are some basic uh, indicators that the phone is having something else that's running on it. Okay. Now, depending upon what malware, which malware world is trying to do, there might be a lot of other indicators. I'm just generalizing it, yeah? Okay, how can we clear all app that is running on the background when the website or app is closed? Or how to check for any malware running on the background? Now, if you are asking this with the context to the desktop, there are ways that you can actually do it. You can you can simply go to a command prompt and you can type netstat, N-E-T-S-T-A-T. -E uh, I can put up uh, it in the chat box if you want. Uh, N-E-T-S-T-A-T, -E -T, netstat minus A-N. It will show you all the network connections that is going out from your machine outside. If you have freshly started your computer after a clean shutdown, and when you run the netstat and you see there are a few other connections going out, and you check the IP address on the Google and it says unknown, then that is an indicator that something else is running on your device trying to connect out. Now, doing this on a mobile phone gets very tricky. Okay, so yeah, running on the background on a, on a mobile phone, uh, even iPhone or Android phone doesn't allow you to do most of the time. So that, again, that's why uh, you don't have that much control on a mobile phone. Uh, if you are the one who's trying to find out and clean it up, you need help from tools like MTD. Uh, how about RFIDs? How do we prevent our data from being stolen? Now, RFID embedded in what kind of uh, application? RFID in your access card? RFID or NFC chipset in your credit card. Yeah, so these all are two different attacks altogether. So I'm trying to get the context of that question that came in. How about RFID? How do we prevent our data from being stolen? Yeah, so if you are actually looking from RFID as in uh, uh, one, we have uh, multiple versions and multiple channels. Uh, so the RFIDs today have uh, built-in storage mechanism, built-in um, encryption standards. Uh, so whatever data inside the RFID can be encrypted so that even if someone reads the RFID, it means nothing for them because they can't even decrypt it. But the normal access cards that you use, which is a very, very normal static uh, RFID cards, uh, that's easy to clone. That's very, very easy to clone, and anyone can get into your office, pretty much. Yeah, uh, if you are if you are looking at from. Okay, that's an interesting question that has come up. But let me finish uh, the NFC first. Yeah, so the NFCs you need to be m more careful with because of the near frequency stuff. Anyone who actually touches can read things out. Yeah, so. That's why a lot of people say that you need to have an uh, RFID protective, uh, like a case or a wallet, uh, where from outside they can't simply read your NFCs inside. Yeah, so those kind of wallets do help. See, unfortunately, uh, when we roll out new technologies, we don't think in full spectrum of security. We only look from an application perspective. So we roll out technologies and then scratch our head how to protect. NFC is such a technology. We rolled it out even before we had any answer for security on it. Now, the I think we'll take it as a, as a last question or there's more questions coming in then we can take it more. Okay, last question. Is it safe to save card details in Grab, Touch and Go, Etc. Tricky question with respect to those companies. <laughs> okay, uh, but let me try to answer it uh, genuinely and truthfully. Now, anything that you store in any website or application, 
the safety of it depends upon how secure that company, its infrastructure and application. Okay, right? So how safe is your data in their infrastructure depends upon how safe is their infrastructure is. Okay, now, if their infrastructure gets hacked, your credit card data is compromised. Yes. If your mobile phone gets compromised, your credit card that is stored in that particular app is also going to be compromised. So both ways it is possible. Now what's the beauty is, for example, if I take Grab. OK, now touch and go also has as its own plus and minuses. OK, now Grab, when you add your. Your credit card to the Grab app. And you book your. Ride or your food, you would have figured it out. It is no longer asking your OTP. Or, or your secure 3D, it automatically deducts money from your card. So if a malware gets onto your mobile phone, uses the app call to make the payment, it can be done without you authorizing the payment. These kind of attacks called as authorized push payment fraud, APP fraud, authorized push payment fraud. Again, this is already happening in US and UK. It hasn't come here yet. It's on its way. So careful when you're attaching your cards to these e-wallets. Uh, they can be initiated for other payments out. Just be careful. It's always good to check what money is going on from our statements yeah, and from our cards. So with that, uh, Thank you guys. Hope it was useful. Yeah. Um, thank you. Have a safe and blessed day. And I pass to the MC back. Thank you, thank you. for this insightful. Uh, thank you, Mr. Clement, for this insightful and valuable sharing. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of our session. For your kind information, we have shared a survey link in the chat box. A survey QR code is displayed on screen. We would appreciate if you could spend a few minutes to complete the survey. Your feedback will be invaluable to our future webinars. We would like to express a big thank you to all our guests for joining us today. Stay safe, have a good weekend. Thank you.